Michael Nagy here with Jiggy Jag TV and DiscoveringBands.com, and I'm here with Panic Lift. How you doing today? Good, man. Just trying to stay alive. Right. It's good to have you back on the show here. So uh, I see you've good been doing be a lot of these live uh, shows. How, how are that, how's that been going? You know, it's been really interesting. Like, I think after the last tour we did and after the last show we did, that was last May, um, I wasn't really into the idea of doing many more shows. And then this whole kind of coronavirus thing popped up and... You know, I, there was a need for live gigs. People wanted some escape from some entertainment. And, you know, I had all the gear necessary to do it. And I kind of was like, you know what? Like, there's a, a need here that needs to be fulfilled and I can do it. And, and it kind of what's crazy about it is it kind of uh, made me start to really enjoy doing it again as well. So it's been interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I see you even debuted a new song, Every Broken Piece. You want to tell us about that? Absolutely. You know, I've been slowly working on an album, and um, I had about six songs recorded and another six that I needed to finish vocals on. And what's crazy is, you know, every, in March, um, they started the whole lockdown thing. And, and luckily, with my job, I can work remotely. So I was uh, told to work remotely, but at that time... I wasn't getting much work to do because everything else was shut down. A lot of what my job depends on is other places being open and they were closing. So I was really slow. So I kind of, in that month, I finished six more songs and then all of a sudden I have an album done. So I thought, you know, this would be a great time just to like give some people, a, you know, a little taste of it and give them something new to listen to. So they weren't hearing the same old songs. And uh, that was one of the ones that are more finished. And uh, so far, I've gotten a really good response from it. And I noticed you got kind of the harsher vibe, like your first album. Is that more how the album's leaning towards? Or? I mean, every album, it's always strange putting out one song first because I don't think it's ever a great idea how the whole thing sounds. Um, I think it's about 50-50. I think, I think even the songs with cleaner vocals are heavier so it's not exactly like uh, like as future pop as as the older stuff was, but you know the cleaner stuff is more aggressive. I think the the aggressive stuff is you know just as aggressive. So I think it's a it's a really nice balance of everything. And what do you yourself enjoy most? The harsher, the cleaner stuff, or just equally? Or? I mean, I think earlier in uh, like doing Panic Lift, I was ever sure, and I kind of found myself gravitating towards like just really enjoying both of them equally for different reasons and it's i've always kind of told myself like maybe i should stick to just one or maybe i should stick to just two and uh it wasn't until i toured uh this was back in 2014 with instead of perfection i had to play both the cleaner songs and the and the dirtier songs and i had everybody come up to me like this is your sound we don't. We can't imagine your band without the junk position between clean and and the screaming stuff. So I think what I enjoy most is trying to kind of do both of that in, in a way that's that's consistent. That that's that's you know good to hear. That's that's a, a nice balance. Cool. Now, do you have any other B sides or unreleased tracks over the years that maybe people are interested in knowing about? Oh, uh, you know what's funny. Typically, all my B-sides, well, I wouldn't even call them B-sides. I kind of, the way I write is I just write. And then whether or not I have 10 songs or 20 songs, they all eventually get used somehow. Whether I delete everything of one track and then, and then start by with just one idea I liked. You know, I think even starting from the first album, it wasn't ever like, I have 20 songs and these 10 are good ones. It was like, I wrote 10 songs, those were the album and I just kept writing. Um, so I, there's not very many B-sides. I think they all eventually get used. I think when I did Skeleton Key, I had wrote 17 songs, like 13 made the album. And then the rest either went to the singles that came after I put out two EPs for that album. All those B-sides went there and then two of the songs actually made it to end process. So <laughs> it all eventually gets used. Cool. 
Now you have a lot of material now, so how do you decide what you're going to play live and pick what songs? How's the process in that? It's the worst. <laughs> I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate having to, to choose because you're, you're thrown in between what you know are the popular songs and what you know the songs you want to play. And then it's like, and then what you think, you know, people want to hear. Like, so you know, even last tour, I think the last time we interviewed, you interviewed me was in Philadelphia. Like mm -hmm. we had done one song on that tour called Of Shadows and Trees which is hands down probably my favorite Panic Club song. But it was track eight on our third album, like not, I don't think it was a song that people really wanted to, were itching for me to hear, you, you know? But I just had to do it. It was one, a song I wanted to play. So um, it's kind of trying to make sure you hit all the right, you know, you set it up like a roller coaster, you make sure you hit all the right songs at the right time and try to like, in the middle, squeeze in something you want to do, you know. So that's kind of how I how I've always set it up. You know, a lot for the fans and, and just a little bit for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you got that itch again. Do you think you're going to want to play live when this is all over? You know, I thought about it. Um, Christ, even like thinking about the whole idea of playing live after this is all over. What is that even going to look like? You know. Um, I've actually had a couple talks with some promoters and they're like, listen, when this is all done, we want you to, to play our grand opening party, right? And, and I was like, yeah, just keep me posted. But you really think about like, what's that going to look like? What is the whole entertainment industry in general going to look like? You know, it's, it's really just uncertain times. Uh, but I think under the best circumstances, if we did play again, you know, I think doing these shows by myself has really um, shown me how I can do things pared down and maybe like, you know, less might be more, you know, so I think it would probably go more in the direction how we were when we started, where it was just me and Dan and Dan was like doing all the electronics and I was going back and forth with doing some electronics and the vocals, you know, I don't know what kind of situation we'd be, would be good to have all four of us on stage again. You know, I'd love that, but it's just trying to think about how that's going to, like, you know, to fly in all my guys to do that. I mean, flying is going to be crazy next year. Like, shows might be half capacity, which means, you know, probably half the, the guarantee I can charge to play a gig. So it's like having to balance the economics of what live shows might look like and what we can do might be tough. So I think uh, if I had to give an answer, it would probably just be more of the electronic stuff with less people. But we'll or, see, you know. Or maybe staying local to the area and seeing how that goes. Right. Like, I couldn't imagine, you know, even like what we were doing a couple of years ago, flying out for one-off shows. Like, I can't imagine doing that. Like, they were just saying, I read today about some of the, the flight ideas they had for flights about, like, you know, pretty much like uh, sanitizing people before they walked onto a plane. Like, like how is that, like, how is that going to be any way, like, affordable for a, a promoter to do? You know, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It doesn't, it's crazy to think about. I don't know. I feel like right now the mainstream media are just putting so much information out there. You don't really know what's happening. So you just got to kind of wait it out and see because it's just. Right. Putting right. You know, almost. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and, and it's like, um, it's been crazy to see like, you know, I was still doing streams even before this happened. I, I have I had a Twitch account for a while and it's been crazy to see like uh, certain things that have kind of just filled the void. You know, like I remember the first stream I did, the one that we had talked about originally, it was just from my Facebook page. You know, when I would do streams, I'd have only like a handful of people watching, mostly my hardcore fans. And then it's like all of a sudden I did a stream at four o'clock on a Sunday and there's over a hundred people watching. And it's like, I don't know, it's like, you, you know there's a need for it still, but how to fulfill that in this time is, is going to be just, it's interesting to think about. I don't know, it's interesting and scary, honestly. Especially your music, there's a lot of energy and stuff that goes in, it, so there's nothing like the live performance, even though it's cool doing the virtual stuff, the live show, you, you can't compare. Oh, right, absolutely. And then, you know, even thinking about that, it's like, all right, so best case scenario, we do do a show, like, what are me and Dan going to do? Stay six feet away from each other on stage? 
you know? And then it's like, some of these stages I play on aren't even six feet long. <laughs> right. So it's gonna it's gonna be real real interesting, you know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, not, it, I don't know. It's um, you know that the, the it's it's strange not playing in front of an audience. I, I will say that about the streaming shows because you know I've taken to keeping the chat log open for the uh, for the for whatever festival or or or, um, or like you know stream I'm playing for open while I play because at least it makes me feel like I'm not playing to an empty room. You know, I would see the chat log going and like, I would just like try to read off some username is like, hey, I'm here, like, you know, but it's still, it's, yeah, it's not the same. Do you plan on debuting a few more new songs as time goes on? Uh, I'm definitely playing a different one on, um, on Saturday for Dark Side of the Con. Okay, cool. So, um, you know, I played every broken piece again for Terminus last week and, uh, you know, because I just think that song would have gone over very well with with their crowd. Um, but you know, a lot of the dark side of the con people are, are all local people, so I know a lot of them were probably already tuning into the uh, the feed I did the first time. So I thought I'd give them uh, another song. So it'll be another song off the up upcoming album on Saturday for sure. Different set too. I mean, some of the songs will be the same because there's, like I said, there's some songs I kind of just always have to play. Um, but I'm definitely get it, you know, reach into the, uh, reach back and do a couple really obscure ones, you know, to have a little fun with it. Cool. Now, besides Panic Lift, are you involved in any other projects? Um, you know what? For years, I, I didn't want to because I wanted to do everything I ever wanted to do under one name. But um, last, at the end of last year, earlier into this winter, I did a solo project uh, just under my own name, James Francis Thomas, um, and it's a really instrumental, mellow EP that, that's um, kind of more in the vein of uh, some like uh, older electronic acts like uh, Delirium and things like that. Um, and it's gotten a great response so far. So I'm hoping I do more of that. Uh, as far as any other bands, like you know, I play live with a lot of bands, like Fires. I I've done tons of shows with them playing guitar. Life Cried, I, I've played guitar for. Um, I could see doing more with Life Cried because you know he's you know right around the block. Fires, I would I'd love to play with, but she's out in New Mexico right now, so that's a whole another uh, issue. You know, going back to having to travel, you know how that's going to look like next year might be a uh, might be a little might be a little hairy. Yeah. We'll say when everything does eventually hopefully get back to normal. Are there any bands you'd like to share the stage with? Um, in particular, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, there's a lot of stuff I, I love, you know, and, and I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to sharing the stage with any band. Uh, if I had to play with any now that I can think of who I'm really into, um, I know like uh, recently, Actually, just tonight, me and my wife were watching a live set from the first Terminal Terminus Festival stream from uh, Helix, which is uh, Tom Shear and Mary Catman. And um, we're label mates with them, actually. And I think that would be a, a really fun show to do because they're both great people. I know them. Um, I'm trying to think of some other bands like, you know, we're really good friends with from uh, Pittsburgh, Tragic Impulse. I think they're really good guys. Um, we, you know, always would, you know, wouldn't mind playing with them, you know, just, you know, I, as I get older, there's just a lot of, uh, it's more playing with friends and having good times and then thinking of what would advance my career, you know, obviously I would love to play with these giant, enormous bands, but now it's like, ah, I just want to have fun. So whoever I'm cool with, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if people want to look you up, find you online, get your music, how do they do that? Um, right now, right now, Bandcamp is probably in Facebook uh, and all the usual social media stuff. You know, it's usually at Panic Lift or at Panic underscore Lift, one of the one of the two. Um, and then PanicLift.BandCamp.com. Uh, we had a website. I kind of canceled it because who really goes to websites anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I hate to say it. When was the last time you wanted to find out about a band and, and went to panicliff.net? You know, I don't, I hardly went there and I, I was the one who created it. You know, like, so uh, I canceled that. So a band camp and Facebook and like Instagram, Twitter, 
you know, you can find us on there. Right. Cool. So I want to ask, with doing panic lift over the years, are there some memorable experiences you can share for everyone? Um, you know, some of the festivals we played were always really great. I think the standout um, one had to have been Terminus Festival in 2013. That that sticks out um, only because you know we had just played with them last week and. It was kind of like just kind of upsetting in a way because it's like, you know, you had all these people in the chat room and it's like, oh, like normally I'd, I'd be hanging out with all you guys and playing in front of all you guys, you know. Um, I think, you know, that any of the festivals we did, like Triton Festival, Kinetic Festival was great. Um, and especially with Gothic Treffen, I think that was kind of the icing on the cake in Germany in 2009. Like that's that was an amazing experience. Just the whole if I, I tell everybody, if you can ever make that pilgrimage, so we've got the Treff, and if you're into like industrial and goth, like that's somewhere you have to go at least once because the whole entire Leipzig shuts down almost, and it's just like venues every couple square miles, and it's just overrun with with goth and industrial people, and it's just a, uh, it's just overwhelming and amazing. Like I would, that was definitely a life changing experience. Cool. Well, it was good having you and talk with you. Everyone, look them up. Yeah, man, it was good seeing you. I hope you're uh, staying safe and staying well. And I'm glad to see, you know, very much like what I'm doing. You're uh, adjusting to the new uh, the new normal and you're still killing it with your interviews. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's different. I like the in-person interviews, but I want to keep giving content to everybody and helping, you know, bands and stuff. So, And that's what it is, man. It's uh, really just uh, people who can... Uh, you know, adapt to what this is going to look like for a while or are the, are the ones who are going to excel. So that's really awesome you're doing that. And thank you so much for having me again, man. It was good seeing you. Glad to know you're doing good.